Hey, welcome to this MERN application starter guide. In this video, I'll guide you through building both the backend and the frontend of the website. For the backend, we'll develop five API endpoints and enable image uploads. On the frontend, our main focus will be displaying the data, adding new data, and updating existing data. We won't cover CSS styling in this tutorial. Hey, welcome everybody. I've already created a new folder called MERN and inside this folder is where we're going to be creating our server and our client project. They're going to be two different projects, but we're going to store them in one folder so they're easily accessible. So to start with, we're going to create the server. So new folder server. And we can open this MERN folder inside Visual Studio Code. On Windows, there is a shortcut, but doing left shift, right click and open in terminal. Then we can do code period and this will open Visual Studio Code. On the left side we have the Explorer and as you can see we are in the MERN folder and we have the server folder that we just created. So we can either use the PowerShell from here or we can use the terminal from inside Visual Studio Code. For me because I'm zoomed in I need to press on the three dots terminal new terminal. As you can see we're currently in the MERN folder which is correct but we need to navigate to the server folder so we can initialize a new project. In order to do this we can do cd server and from here, we can initialize a new project by doing npm init dash y. And the dash y for luck like is just going to skip all of the questions and create the package.json file for us. Now let's clear this and let's install all of the packages that we need. So I'm going to do npm i for install and then we're going to do course.env express and mongoose. I will explain every single package as when we use it in the project. Let's clear this one more time and I'm going to install a development package called Node1. So npm i for install and then this is going to be dash dash save dash dev Node1. Node1 is going to help us restart the server every time we make a change in our project. It's just a nice way of developing in Node.js. Let's minimize this and the first thing that I would like to do is go to the server folder and create a .env file. Inside this .env file, later on in the tutorial, we're going to be storing the MongoDB connection string, which will contain our username and password. So we need to keep this safe. And in most cases, people will publish this project on GitHub and you don't want to expose your username and password. So what we can do is create a new file called .gitignore. Inside this file, we can tell which files and folders to ignore. So I'm going to do .env. Save this and we are good to go. Now let's open the package.json file and have a look at it quickly. So from here we have the name version and description. And if we look below, we have the script, which I'm going to look in a second, dependencies and development dependencies. Now, as of currently, these are the dependencies that we're going to be using today. And these are the current versions. In future, they're most likely going to change. So note that there might be breaking changes and you might have to Google the errors. Feel free to comment below if you have any problems. But another way is to install exactly the same versions as the one I have. You can literally copy this and then do npm install and it's going to install those versions for you as well. And the last thing that we're going to look into is the development dependency, which is node one. Now let's focus on the scripts super quickly. Scripts are where we can basically tell a server to start a project or we can tell node one to listen on local changes and restart the server. So from here, we need to add two more. The first one is going to be start and the start is going to be just index.js. This is going to be kind of like the brain of our project index.js, which we're going to create in a second. So when you publish your project online, you normally use the start script and it's going to start the file that you want. But when we develop locally, we can do another one. You can call it whatever you like, dev for development. And then from here, I want nodemon to listen for changes. So I'm going to do nodemon and then index.js, which is the same file. So essentially we're going to start a script called development and this script is going to run nodemon and it's going to listen for changes. That's pretty much it. Save this and close it. Now let's create our index.js file inside the server. So index.js and from here we can start including all of the libraries that we need. So the first package that we need is going to be .env. So require and then this is going to be .env. And as I mentioned earlier, this is going to contain our MongoDB connection string. So let's do config and we're done. Now let's add the other packages that we need. Const course equals require and we require course. 
course is cross-origin resource sharing, which is going to allow for React application to reach or server. Without this, we won't be able to fetch any data because technically speaking, they're two different websites and they won't be able to talk to each other. Now we need to do const express equals require and then we require express like so. Express is what we're going to be using to start our server. It makes things so much easier and there is a lot of packages that you can use with Express. And that's pretty much the basic. So let's create our server first of all, const app and then Express and we can start this function. If you hover over Express here, you will see that this function creates an Express application. And then we can do const and put a port number for application and then this is going to be process dot env and then port now this is mainly used for when you upload your project on a server online and you want to use the default port number because they vary uh, different companies use different port numbers but when we're developing locally we want to set a default one which is going to be 8000 and that needs to be different to the react one just to mention now let's create a super basic route and see whether we can start the server so i'm going to do app dot get and this is going to be a home route so if we don't put anything here this is going to be home but if you wish you can put about and so on so that's going to be it and then from here we can do request and the response this is going to be an arrow function and inside here we can do something like rest.json and then maybe hello mate and now we can start our server by doing app.listen and then we can listen on the port number here and then this is going to be an arrow function like so. And inside here, we can do console log. And in single slanted quotes, this is very important because it allows us to add template literals. We can do server is running on port. And then we can bring the port number with the dollar sign curly bracket and then port like so from here. Let's see whether we can run our server. So I'm going to go on the terminal one more time. In fact, I'm going to use the shortcut, which is control and the hat key on my keyboard, I believe. And from here, we can do npm run dev, which is the development command that we added inside package.json. As you can see, nodemon has started the node index.js file and it's running on port 80,000. If I was to come here and make a change, let's say we make a space and save it, you will see that Nodemon restarts the server straight away, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to go back here and let's try to visit our server in the browser. So if you open the browser and if you go to localhost of port 80,000, you should be able to see hello mate. And that's the first step of creating our server. All right, let's minimize this. Our application is running, which is amazing. And we can also create another route, for example, here, which can be kind of like our 404 route. So app.get and if we put star this means that everything else it's going to maybe do just json 404 you can also do it as dot status send status or whatever so if i was to go on the browser refresh this is still work but if i go to slash about let's say you will see that we're getting not found which is awesome let's go back and let's go back to the project and now let's set up some of the middleware that we need so first of all we've required course but we haven't used it so somewhere around here we can set up all middlewares and to allow course the very basic we can do is app.use and then we can just do course just like we're initializing the express application here we're doing the same with course and this is what's going to allow the cross origin resource sharing we're also going to pass json data in our body of application and in order to be able to do this we can use express and we can set up some middleware so app.use and then express dot euro encoded and then we need to put this setting inside here which is called extended to true to true like so and we want one more app dot use and inside here we can do express dot json like so and save make sure that your application is running you can just refresh the browser or you can look into your command line here and if everything is good we can continue. All right, now is a good time to create our database and connect to it. So let's go back to the browser, go to mongodb.com, click try free if you haven't got an account yet. From here, you can use the form to sign up or you can use sign up with Google. I've already got an account, so I'm going to click sign in. Okay, once you're in, your dashboard should look something similar to this. 
If you haven't created any projects yet, you might just have a big green button and all you need to do is create a new project. For me, I can click here on the drop down menu and click new project. Let's call this one Mern underscore one because I've already got a Mern project and I'm going to click next. From here, we need to select a project owner, which is going to be me. And we need to build a database. Now we can choose of where we want to deploy our database. And I'm going to choose the M0 cluster here. Scroll down. I'm going to leave this as default to AWS, but you can choose whatever you wish. And then I'm going to change the region to be the closest to me. So in this case, maybe. So in this case, maybe I can use Island. And for the name, I'm going to leave it as default, but feel free to change this and then click create. In this step, we need to create our username and password. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you should see that they've already created a username and password that I can use. So I'm going to copy the username, paste it inside the .env here, and I'm going to copy the password as well and paste it inside here. And now let's create the user. After this, I have my local environment selected. From here, you need to add your IP address so you can connect to the database from your computer and then finish and close. While the cluster is provisioning, this is going to take a couple of seconds. We can go to network access. And I just wanted to show you that if you wish to, you can delete your current IP from here and you can add another one and you can allow access from anywhere and confirm. Now this is going to allow me to connect to the database from anywhere. All right, let's go back to the database. While this is provisioning, we can click on connect and then select MongoDB for VS Code. From here, copy the connection string, so copy, and then go back to your .env file. And we need to create a name that we can use in our application. So in this case, I'm going to call this MongoDB underscore URI and don't make any spaces around here and then paste your connection string. Now, if we focus super quickly on the connection string, you will see that we have the username, which is already added. And then inside here, we have the password. So we need to replace this with the password that we created earlier. So I'm going to paste in here. Let's remove ready. And then here at the back, select a database that we want to use. In this case, I'm going to call my database box and save. Let's close the .env file now and let's have a look at how we can connect to a database. So let's open the Explorer and inside here we can create another file called ConnectDB. And then this is going to be a .js file. So from here, in order to connect to a database, we need to require mongoose. So const mongoose equals require and then we require mongoose. And now we need to create our connection function. So const, we can call it connect DB. And this is going to be an asynchronous function like so. And then inside here, we can do the logic. Before we do anything though, I want to export this function so we can use it inside the index.js file. Sometimes our files get a little bit longer and then we forget to do it. So module dot export equals and then the function name, which is this one here. Close this. And now we can do the functionality. So since this is a, an asynchronous function, we can do try catch. And then inside the try, we can try to connect. So the first thing I'm going to do is set a mongoose setting, which is going to remove some of the warnings inside the command line that we don't want. So mongoose now set. And from here, we can do strict query. And this needs to be set to false. And now let's do our connection. So const con, I'm going to call it. And then this is going to be await mongoose dot connect. And then we need to connect to the string here that we've added. So potentially you could copy this and put it, but that's not really safe. You want to be using that .env file instead. And we can copy the name from here, mongodb URI and reuse the inside here by doing process dot env and then the name that's it and that's going to be bring the string and now we can do console dot log and then inside here we can do database connected and then we can use template one more time because i'm using the slanted quotes we can do con which is the constant here and then dot connection 
and then dot host. That's it. And now, if you wish, we can console log the error, which comes from here, from the catch statement. And we can also terminate the process by doing process dot exit one, and we're done. Okay, this is our connection string created. And now we can use this in our index.js file. So I can go back and somewhere around here, we need to bring this file first of all. So I'm going to do const connect db. And then this is going to be equals require. And since this file is literally next to the index.js, we can do dot slash and then connect db. Like so, we don't need to specify .js or anything like that. And now we can run this function. So copy it. I'll run it here by or middleware. And that's it. If we open the command line, you should see that we have servers running on port 80,000 because I saved node mode refresh. And now we have database connected and then the string. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you is that if I was to make a mistake, let's say, let's open the .env file first of all, which is a good one. And if I was to change this, let's say my username is wrong, I'm going to put ruddy and save. Now look that nodemon did not refresh. This is because nodemon will not refresh when you make changes in the .env file. So you would need to stop the process. So control and X or no, control and C to terminate the process and then Y to press yes. And now on nodemon is not written and I can rerun it by doing up and then npm run dev. And now you should see that application crashed. And this is because we're getting Mongo server error, but authentication, authentication failed. And obviously this is because I've messed up my username. So I'm going to remove this, save, and then I need to restart the server one more time. And now we should be able to connect. Perfect. Let's minimize this, uh, close the .env, close the connection DB. And now let's focus on creating our model. Okay, let's open the explorer here and let's create a new folder called models. And then inside here, I'm going to create one model called box.js. So models is essentially our database table and the fields. So we can essentially create the fields inside here. And this is really powerful because you can kind of like do backend validation as well. And you can set all the fields super quickly. So let me show you what I mean. First of all, we need to require mongoose, const mongoose equals require. And then we require mongoose just like so. And now we can use it. And we also need to require schema in this case from mongoose. So const schema. And this is going to be equals mongoose from here. And then we're grabbing the schema. That's it. And now we can create our schema by doing const. Maybe we can call it book schema. And this is going to be equals new schema like so. And then inside here is where we define our fields. Now, before we do this, we need to export this so we can use it. And again, this might get a little bit longer, this file, and you might forget to do this and it's probably going to error. So module dot export equals mongoose dot model. And then the model that we want to export is going to be called book. And then we put the book schema here. That's it. And now we can create all field. Now, most of our fields will be more or less the same. So I'm going to do, so let's start with the title. And then the title is going to have a type of string. And it's going to be a required field. So true. So in this case, if we have required set to true, and if you don't provide a title, then it's not going to insert any data. And it's going to tell you that, which is great, but also it's going to be annoying if we do it on every single field, because uh, when we build the application, we, we're going to do the fields one by one. And I don't want every single field to uh, not allow me to insert data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to leave it only on the title. So select, of course, select is going to be required, but I'm going to comment it out just so we don't get this error every single time. Select, and then later on, we can unrequire them if that makes sense. And now I'm going to do one more. This is going to be the description. The description is going to be the type of string. And then we can do a thumbnail for image. 
this is going to be the type of string because we're going to be saving the files locally on our server and then just saving the url in the database to reference it then we can have stars this can be the type of number and then we can have one more category and this is going to be the type of array and then last one is going to be created at and then this is going to be the type of date when i create a new record i want to be able to know when this record was created and we can set up a default one so this is another option and then we can do date and i'm going to use javascript here to do it now like so i think there are a couple of different methods of doing this but uh but this has worked for me so i'm going to leave it as it is and that's it that's all model if you want to see the whole thing i will zoom out and here it is let's zoom back in close this let's go back to index.js file and we need to include this just like we included the database so around here we can do const book equals and then require and now this is going to be inside dot models and then slash book like so and that's it right since our first route is going to be getting data what i want to do is insert a little bit of data into the database so we can use it so what i'm going to do is inside the server i'm going to create a new file called data.json don't create this one by the way and i'm going to copy some data that i've prepared so i'm going to copy and paste it and essentially i've created a couple of books so i've added the title the thumbnail the slug the description the stars and a couple of categories as you can see the title is a string the thumbnail is a string and essentially i have a reference to the actual image so it has .jpg at the end we have the slug which is kind of like a nice friendly slug we don't have any special characters and then for the description just a little bit of text and then category is an array so i can copy this and by the way i'm going to save this for you i can copy this go back to our database here in mongodb and then if you click on browse collections you might see that we have this books database and this books table this is purely because early in this tutorial i created this .env file and i added the database name of books and here in my index.js i required my model book and that's why it's actually created the books so i didn't have to do anything to do that it created it automatically and now i can insert some data into the collections in order to do this we can click insert document and then from here we can use this view here and then we can remove everything by the way and now paste the whole document insert it should take a second and now we have a couple of books that we can use now let's jump back to our mern folder and server here and from here i want to create an uploads folder so i'm going to create a new folder and call it uploads so inside this folder is where I'm going to be pasting a couple of images for our books. I'm going to copy and paste them. They're saved from Amazon. So here they are. And I'm going to be using them. And we can now close this. Okay, now just for testing purposes, let's do our first route. And let's see whether we can retrieve the data. And then we'll jump into React and we'll build the other route as when we use them. Just so we know what's going on. So... In order to create a route we can literally copy this one here and we can create it around here this can be our api slash books route and this is going to fetch all the books for us or a limited amount we need to convert this into an asynchronous function like so and then from here we can do try catch and then to retrieve the data we can simply do const data equals await we can use our book model from here so book and then of find by the way you can see all of the mongoose commands here find find by id find by id and delete find one uh, and so on so i'm going to use finding it in this case and then in order to find everything we need to put is curly brackets and leave this empty like so and now if you want to display the data we can do res.json and then inside here we can just do data that's it and if you want to catch the error we can do res.status 500.json and then we can pass the error and error occurred while fetching books perfect now if we save this and if you go to this route 
you should be able to see that we are getting all of the books in here. And now we can use this as our API inside React. And when we start using this API, I'm going to show you how we can do filters. And for example, a very easy one can be limit. And then we can put two. And now if I refresh, you'll be able to see that I'm only getting two books, which is amazing. Okay, now is a good time to start creating our React application. So if we go here in the Explorer, and we need to be inside the merge folder. Open the terminal. So I'm going to do control and the add symbol, and this is going to open it for me. And then in fact, I need a new one. So I believe I can press the plus sign here, and this is going to open a new terminal. So we have two terminals running in parallel. So from here, let's jump into vitjs.dev and let's click on get started. Scroll down a little bit and you'll be able to see the commands from here. So we can use npm create vit at latest. So I'm going to copy this, go back to my terminal and we're currently inside the MERM folder. So I'm going to do paste this and then press enter. This is going to ask me for the project name and I'm just going to call it client. Press enter, choose react. And then I'm going to be using JavaScript. As you can see, this created a client folder for me now, which is my React application. Do the following commands in here. So we need to see the client. And we're now inside the client folder. And now we can do npm i for install. And then just like or Node.js application, we can do npm run dev. Press enter and our application should start. And, and for me, it started under the local host of 5173. I can hold control and press on it and it should open it in the browser. And as you can see, we have our React application working. Let's jump back to Visual Studio Code and let's go into the source super quickly. And then from here, we can look into the index.js file. I'm gonna minimize this while everything is running. And I'm going to remove everything from the index.css file. And I'm going to replace it with the CSS that I've done for this tutorial. And this CSS will be linked in the description below. We're not going to be doing any CSS in this tutorial. So I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to show you super quickly. It's only very basic styles. In fact, I've copied them from the vid default ones. And I've just changed the background color and the color of the topography pretty much. And then I've styled the inputs a little bit just so they look a little bit better. As you can see, I've styled the links, the images, fully responsive. And that's more or less it. I've got some very basic styles here for the books. And that's more or less it. Nothing special, just very basic styles. So let's save this. Close it. Let's go to app.css. I remove everything from here as well. And save this. We can definitely remove this file as we won't need it. Like so, and now we can jump into the app.jsx file from here. And we can pretty much remove everything from here um, and we'll build as we go. So let's remove everything. And inside the return, we can just remove everything as well. Save this. Let's jump into the main.jsx file. Let's remove the index.css as we won't need that and save. Going back to the app.jsx file, let's save this. Let's go back to our application. And as you can see, we're getting a blank screen. So if I do hello, save it, you should be able to get hello and that's it. Also inside assets here, we have a logo, which I'm going to be reusing for application. And also I'm going to drop an image, which is essentially just a placeholder saying no image selected. And that's more or less it. Now let's open the terminal one more time here. Everything is running or backend is running and our front end is running as you can see, but I want to stop the front end so we can install another package. So control C and then we can do npm install and the package that I want to install is called react router DOM. This is what's going to allow us to do the routing for application and it's going to be very easy to use. You'll see in a second. So essentially we're going to create a couple of pages. I'm going to include the router and then we'll be able to browse through them. Uh, we also need to run the project one more time. So if you press up, up, then we can do npm run dev. Okay, make sure that your project is running and let's minimize this. And now we can start building application. 
So we actually need to import this React router, import browser router as router route and route. You'll see how all of them work in a sec. And then from here, we can do from React Router DOM. That's it. Let's minimize this. This will make sense in a second. So inside here, we can also put our header and we can have our footer at the bottom. So essentially, we're going to have the header and the footer on every page, but we only want to change the route, the content inside. So let me show you, first of all, how we can let's tidy things up and let's create our first route so we can include in here. If you go back and the client source inside here, we need to create a new folder called route. And then the first route is going to be called home. So inside home is where we're going to create another file called home.jsx. And now I'm going to be using an extension. If you go to extension super quickly and if you look at this one here, ES7 plus React Redux React Native Snippet, this is going to save us a lot of time and I'm going to show you how right now. So I've got this installed and then from here, I can do RFCE and this is going to create a React functional export component if I click on it and we're done. So I'm going to put this as a capital letter and I'm going to put this home like so. So this is our homepage created. I'm going to copy and paste a little bit of text. Literally, it's just going to say an H1 with home. And then I'm going to say miniature byte plus React demo website. It uses Node.js Express MongoDB as a backend. That's it. Save this. Let's go back to app.jsx and let's import it. So here at the top, we can do import home from and then route slash home slash home. And now we can use this inside the routes by doing route path. And then this is the path of which um, of where you want to navigate in order to see this page. So in this case, this is going to be the slash route because this is the home route. And then this is going to render the element of home. So equals in curly brackets, we open home and we close it like so. Okay. I hope that you can see this and save. And in fact, I've made a mistake. We don't need this. We can just close it like so. And that's it. Awesome. And if we go back super quickly to the main.jsx, we need to also import the index.css. I believe that I removed it. So I'm going to do import and then dot index dot CSS. All right, let's save this, remove this. And now if you go back to the website, you should be able to see that we have header or homepage here rendered and or footer. If you go back, you should see a header, footer and or homepage rendered. Just like this, we can create a couple of more routes. So I'm going to create one more just so you know how it works. So inside routes, I'm going to create another one called about. And inside the about, we're going to create another file called about.jsx. And then we're going to do RFCE and press enter. Make, make this a capital letter, capital letter. And then for the about page, I'm going to copy and paste a little bit of text. So pretty much exactly the same. I'm going to copy and paste an H1 with a little bit of text. But for this one, I've prepared a table of how all routes are going to be looking like. You definitely don't need this. So I'm going to put a table here, which is essentially a table that shows all routes. You'll see in a second. You don't need to do this one here and save it. If we close this and if you go to app.jsx, we can include about by doing hold shift down to duplicate this line and then we can do about, copy this, paste it, paste it. Oops, this needs to be small because the file. And now we can do another route inside here. So control shift down and then this is going to be our about page and then this is going to be the about route. Save this. If you go back, you, you should see no change. But if I go under slash about and press enter, you'll see that we're getting the about page, which also contains the header and the footer. And I've just got a little bit of uh, demo text. And by the way, I am zoomed in quite a bit. The website is kind of like tiny. So I just created like a little table 
for myself, which is kind of like shows what the all routes are going to be like. Now let's have a look how we can do the header and the footer so we can have a working navigation. This is going to be slightly different. I'm going to open the Explorer here and then let's create a new folder inside source called components. And I want to create two files in here. So the first one is going to be header.jsx and then the second one is going to be the footer.jsx. So let's start with a header. I'm going to do RFCE and then inside the header here, we need to bring, bring the React router DOM one more time because we're going to have navigation. So I'm going to do import. I'm going to include the link and then the nav link. And then this is going to be from React router DOM. Inside here, I'm going to remove the header and I'm going to wrap this into a header file like so, sorry, into a header HTML5 element. And inside here is where I'm going to have the logo. So we're going to wrap the logo in the link. We can use the link from here. And then this is going to be equals to. And then when we press on the logo, I just want to go to the home page. That's pretty much it. And I have a class name for it called logo. And then inside here, we can just put an image. The source of the image is going to be called logo, which I'm going to bring now. And then the old text can be React JS, and then we can close this and maybe we can put a little bit of text React JS like so. Uh, the logo can be the logo from assets and then this React.svg. So to import it, we can do import as logo from sorry dot dot slash assets and then slash React.svg, I believe it's called, and save. We also need to create our navigation. So I'm going to do nav. And then inside the nav, we're going to use a nav link instead. So I'm going to do nav link. And the first one is going to be our home link. So two equals and home. And now we can duplicate this two more times. And I can say this one is going to be books. And this one is going to be about. Save this. Now, if you tidy things up by doing right click, Format document, we are looking good. Let's go back into the app.jsx and let's include the header. So let's do import header from and then we do dot slash components and then header. Just like so, we can include the footer as well. So I'm going to copy this line in the footer and then components footer. That's it. And now we can insert them inside here. So header. And then footer. Okay, I actually did not create the footer, did I? I didn't create the footer, so I'm going to jump into the footer dsx and do rfce, and I'm just going to do change the diff to footer, and let's just do ampersand copy, and then copyright. And then I'm just going to do the, a little bit of JavaScript to bring the date by doing new date and then get full year like so. Oops, remove that and that's it. So we have the footage as well. Let's close it and let's go back to our website. As you can see, now we have our header and we have our footer. And if I click on home, it goes to home. If I click about, it goes to the about page and so on. Okay, this is where things are going to get a little bit more interesting now. So we need to create a book page first of all. Let's go back to the project. Let's close everything else and let's create a new route. So inside here, I'm going to create a new one called book. Uh, let's call it book. And then inside here, we're going to do book.jsx. Let's do RFCE. Press enter and this can be book with capital letters and that's it. I can paste a little bit of text in here so it's not that empty. So I'm just going to put an H1 with books and a little bit of text just like before. Save this. Let's jump into app.jsx and let's include that page as well. So I'm going to copy the about here and call it books or book, sorry. And this is going to be book and then book. Copy this. Let's create another route. This is going to be slash book or books. I don't know what to call it. Maybe books we can call it because there will be many books. 
and then we can put the book browser. Save him. Let's go back. And now, if I click on books, you will see that we're getting books, home, and about. Perfect. All right, let's look into our API super quickly and see how we can fetch some data. So if I refresh super quickly, you'll notice that we're getting a lot of data here, and we can fetch this data and display in our application. Another way of doing this, by the way, is if you copy the URL, you can use a plugin such as the Thunder client here, and then you can go to new request, and then paste the URL, and do a get query. So if I put send, you will see that we're getting all the data. And just like so, you can test different methods, for example, the post, put, delete, patch, and so on. Or you can use a client such as Postman or Insomnia to do this as well. Let's close pretty much everything now and let's focus on the book route. Inside here, I'm going to do one more, H2, let's say, and then I'm going to do fetch example. And under fetch example is where we're going to be fetching all data. At the top here, we need to import from React. So the first one being use state. And the second one being use effect hook. And I'm going to show you how we can use them now. And then I'm going to import link as well. So import link from, and this is going to be React Router DOM. I'm seeing some inconsistency here. So I'm going to change it. And now we need to be inside the function of box here. So inside here and before the return. And we can start by bringing all URL. So for example, this URL here, I can copy and I can save it into a const called base URL. And this is going to be equals in double quote or single quote, you can put HTTP column slash slash localhost of 8000 API box. So the first thing that we're going to use is use state. And this is going to be used in order to store and change the data that we're getting from the database. So let me show you what I mean. Const, and then we're going to do data and then set data. And this is going to be equals use state. And we're going to have an empty array like so. So essentially data is where or JSON is going to go this. And then when we need to refresh it, update it, we're going to be using the set data. And let me show you how we can use that. So now we're going to be using the use effect in order to be able to get the data and also update it if we wish to. So use effect and inside here, I'm going to open and close it. And this is going to be an arrow function. So we can do it like that. And inside curly bracket, we can do the logic const fetch data. And this is going to be an asynchronous function. And inside here, we can do try catch. And then inside the try, we can do the logic to get the data. And inside the catch, we can console log the error and handle the error later on. So I'm going to do console.log and do error for now. And we'll come back to it in a sec. So for this project, I'm going to be using fetch and we won't have to install anything else. But feel free to use whatever library you wish, such as Axios. We're going to do const response equals await fetch. And now we just need to put the URL located inside base URL. So I'm going to bring it like so. And that's it. Now we can fetch the data. If we fetch the data successfully, this response will return an object called OK. So for example, we can do, if we don't get a response dot OK, throw an error. So throw new error. And inside here, we can do fail to fetch data. like so but if we do get the data then we can do const and we need to convert the response into json for example i can just call it json data and then equals await and then response dot json so we're getting the response from here and converting it into json and essentially now i can use use state and especially and specifically set data in order to update the data inside here so I'm going to do set data and then we bring the JSON data from here. And that's kind of like more or less it. You can also console log the data if you wish to, or we can do something else. I can go here where all text is and we can do something like pre and then we can do JSON.shringify 
and then inside here I can put the data. So in this case, the data will be literally called data because we're going to be using this data, no, and then two. And now this is going to display in a really nice format for us. Oops. Save this, have a look at the page, and you'll see that we're getting nothing. This is because we have the fetch data function here, but we haven't actually started it. And in order to do this, I can literally grab it and paste it inside here and just start the function. Now, one thing that is very important is to do comma and then an empty array in here, because if we don't do that, this is going to keep fetching the data and it's going to make a ton of requests. So save this. I'm going to right click format document, just to tidy things up. And now if we save and go back, you should be able to see that we're getting the data. Now we can use this data to loop through it and display it in a nice format. Item. Okay, let's wrap everything in an ordered list. Uh, and this unordered list is going to have the class name of books. And inside here, we're going to loop through the data. So I'm going to copy the data. Let's do data.map as item. For example, or you can call it book, whatever you wish. And then do, let me remove this view. And then do list. And each list will have to have a unique key. This is how React will know whether something is being updated. And in this case, our database has a unique ID. Sorry, each record has a unique ID, so I can use that. So we can do item in this case, dot underscore ID. And then inside here is where we can display the data. And I'm going to link the data to equals. And then the route for this is going to be under single slanted quotes slash books slash and then dollar sign curly brackets and I'm going to do item dot slug in order to grab the slug from here. So this is going to be the great Gatsby. This is going to be all link. Let's see if I'm missing anything. We need to close the link and I'm going to wrap everything. And inside here is where we're going to bring the data. So for example, the image source and the image source will be, oops, we need to open and close curly bracket, single quote, and then we can do HTTP slash slash localhost slash 8000 slash upload. This is where the images are located. And then we can bring the thumbnail. So item dot thumbnail. Don't forget an old text. Item dot. Maybe we can just put the title because I don't have an old text. And that's it. Now we can put an H3. And then inside this H3, we can just do item dot title and close. It. Save this. Let's go back, refresh. And as you can see, our box are looping here and our images are broken. And this is purely because our server does not know where this upload folder is. If we open the Explorer, minimize everything, go to the server, go to index.js. And then from here, where we have our middleware, we can do another one, app.use, and we're going to set our uploads folder here, uh, where is it? uploads folder as a static folder so it's easily accessible. So we're going to do slash uploads, and then express static, and then we put the, the uploads folder as a static folder. And this is also going to help us with uploading the images later on. So save this, let's go back, refresh or React application. And as you can see, the images are now coming up. And if I hover over them, you will see that here on the left side, the links are changing to the slug. Now the slug is a little bit dangerous because you do need to have a unique slug. Otherwise, obviously it might just pick up the first record in the database. And one way of mitigating and one way of fixing this, for example, would be to use an ID instead of the slug, but obviously it does not look pretty and that's why I'm going to use slug, but I uh, just have that in mind. Okay, let's tidy things up. So right click format document, that looks a lot better. And let's make this a little bit better. So for example, we can set a loading state. Here where we have the data, we can create one more and this one is going to be is loading, is loading. And then we can put set is loading. And then the use state is going to be equal set to true as default. And now we can use this set 
is loading. So when we fetch the data here, so we are grabbing the data and then I can set is loading to false. So we're no longer loading the data. And the same here, I can do set loading if we get an error to false one more time. We fail to get the data, so I'm going to set it to false. And now we can actually wrap the entire bit here. So maybe the entire URL and I can wrap it like so. So we can do is loading, question mark, open and close brackets. Inside here, we can just do a paragraph for now. Obviously, you can make something better than this. You can put an animation or something. And I'm just going to put loading. Dot, dot, dot. Um, that doesn't look right, so I'm going to remove it. And then we're going to do else, show the data. So I'll have to wrap everything inside here and close it. Okay, so if we shouldn't see any changes now, if I refresh, no changes. But if I do right click, inspect, and if I go to network, uh, where we have no throttling, we can select this and say slow, slow 3G or fast 3G. Let's say slow 3G. And now refresh. Hopefully we should be able to see the page rendering super slow and we should be able to see the loading. Here we go, loading. And now the data is loading and the images have loaded. So all loader is working. Obviously, if we do no throttling, it will show up, but it's going to be super fast. So as you can see, loading, it's super fast. Cool. That's all loading done. Let's do the same for the errors. So, so if I go here, we can do another one and this is going to be error. And we can set error. The use state for the error is going to be null. And now we can use the set error. When we error here, we can do set error and we can do something like error fetching data. Please try again later. That rhymes as well, which is cool. And now I can use the error to wrap everything around here. So essentially it's a little bit hard to see, but here we can do error. If it's loading, show the loading. If we get an error, I want to show for example, a paragraph called error. So, oh, well, we can bring the error actually because we're setting it. We're setting some text in here. So I can just bring the error or you can type something and then we can bring the books format just like so. Okay. Refresh, everything is working correctly. But if I break the API for some reason, in fact, let's just change the URL here. So maybe we go under API one and save it. So now you will see error fetching data. Please try again later, which is awesome. And I can remove this and save. All right, just to make this a little bit better, I'm going to show you how to do filters super quickly. So for example, where we have fetch examples, I'm going to do a select menu. So this is going to be a diff with the class name of filters. And inside here, we're going to have a label of categories. I'm going to remove this and just wrap it like so. Sorry about that. So label with categories, that's pretty much it. And now we can create a select. All right, select. And let's create or select super quickly. So I'm going to add a couple of options. So option one can be all. And then the value. The value can be empty for this, but then I need to pause the video super quickly and just have a look at what categories we have. So we have romance science, All right? I've copied some of the categories and now I can put them in here. So super quickly, this is going to be romance, romance with capital letter. And by the way, make sure that the value is a smaller letter because they need to match the database. And I'm going to speed up the process here by doing one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. All right, cool. All right, here the categories are probably added too many to be fair, but that should be fine. And now if I was to save this, let's go back to the browser. And here we are. We have a couple of categories. So the idea is when I click on a category, let's say science, I want the books to go to the database and bring me all the science books, if that makes sense. 
All right, in order to do this, first of all, let's go here at the top and let's create one more use state. So I'm going to copy this one here, select the category. And now we can do set selected category. And then the use state for this can be just empty like so. And that's it. And now we can use this. In fact, let me copy it. And we can put it inside here. So on change event and then this is going to be an arrow function and now we can set the event inside the set selected category we're doing the event dot target and then we target the value that we've selected like so so when we selected one of those options the value will be saved into the set selected category and now we need to add this category to the url so for example we have the base url in here but I'm going to modify a little bit and maybe we can do it like so. So maybe we can do let URL equals base URL. And then if select the category, select the category, which is here, then we want to do URL. So the current URL, which is this here, and we want to add a URL parameter to it, but then plus equals. And then essentially we can do question mark category, or you can shorten it if you wish, and then dollar sign and then the selected category, which is this here. And we will need to change the base URL here to the URL, which is fine. And that's it. Essentially, if I go back to the API where we have books, what I want to do is put category and then the category name. So for example, crime, and then bring the crime. At the moment, it's just gonna go and fetch exactly the same books. And this is because we need to do this on the back end. So if you go back super quickly, and then if we go back to the server index and find the API box router, inside here is where we need to grab the parameters from the URL and do the query. So in order to grab the query, we can go here on the tribe and we can do const category equals, and then we can do request dot query and then dot category like so. And we will be able to capture the category from the URL. We can also console log this if you wish to. So category. And now if I go back to the browser and let's say we press enter in the crime here, let's open the command line, go to the Node.js here, and you'll be able to see that we're getting crime, which is amazing. Now we need to bring this category into here, but if you wish to create more, for example, you might want to create rating you do something like stars, and then this is gonna be equals stars. For example, I'm not gonna do that, but if you do it, let me remove this. We need to put it into a filter object. So we can do const filter equals, and then the filter. And then we can do if we have category, if we grab this from the URL, then we can add it, then we can add it to the filter. So filter, Dot category and then equals category that's it so we add in this object of category to the filter and then the data comes from here and now we can use this photo into or find here query just like so and we then save it and if we go back and if we do crime hopefully the data should change and i'm going to copy science for the next one all right we have two crime books and i'm going to put science and just like that when we go to the React app super quickly, we are putting category here. And when we select one from here, we're changing the event. We're selecting one of these, setting it to set selected category. And then hopefully we are updating the URL if that makes sense. But there is one more thing. This is where we use use effect and we listen kind of like on changes. So if the selected category changes, which is here, then we want to refresh the data, for example, and I can put it inside here like so, and that's it. Save it. Now, if we go back to React app, refresh just in case, and then if I go and the romance, we're getting one book. If we go science, we're probably just getting one as well. Crime, we're getting two. Food, that changed. Adventure, trailer, fiction, and other. Perfect. And if I press on all, it sends an empty value. And then it's basically kind of like this. And then obviously that displays all the data.
Awesome. All right, now we can do the detailed view of our box. For example, when I click on this one here, we can grab the slug and then display the rest of the data for the book. So the first thing I'm going to do is the route. So I'm going to jump to the server and then index.js and essentially we can copy most of the stuff from here. I'm going to copy this and paste it around here. So this is going to be more or less the same. In this case, I'm going to be removing all this and changing it a little bit. So, so here we have the slug. And what we can do is after the books, this is going to be another get route, by the way. And this is going to be slash and then slug. As I mentioned earlier in the tutorial, you can use ID if you wish to, but make sure that your slugs are unique in order for this to work. So to grab the slug in Node.js, we can do const and we can call it something like slug parameter, param, whatever, and then request dot params and then slug. This needs to match this basically. If it's ID, put it as an ID. That's it. And now you could console log this if you wish to. The log and then slug around like so. And now if I visit the new request here, and if we do, let's say, slash rad, and if I send this, an error catching box. Did I save this, by the way? Save this. Uh, let's open the terminal. Oh yeah, here we go. As you can see, rad. So if I put one, two, three, send, we get rad one, two, three, which is good. Okay. So our slug is working. Um, I can remove the console log. And now instead of finding all books, we need to change the query and do find one instead. Remove the filter. And the book that we want to find is the one that we pass through the slug. So we can query by the slug basically. And inside here we can do slug. So this is in the database, field in the database. And this is the data coming from the slug here. In this case, that's going to be pretty much it. If I save this and if I go back to new request, I actually need to find a book. So let's say this slug here, the Great Gatsby, copy it. And let's do slash Great Gatsby. And here we go. We only get one book, the Great Gatsby. And now we can use this API to display the data in React.js. So if we go back to a project, let's close books. Let's go to client, source, route, books. And then inside here, we can name a single book or detailed book. Let's do single book dot JSX like so. Let's do RFCE. In fact, this is going to be a big copy and paste job. If we go to books, let's open that and let's put it to the side for a sec. And let's see what we can copy. So let's copy this stuff from the top. We need react, use state, use effect. We need the link, the, the base URL, the data we can copy. So I'm going to put them inside here. I'm not going to do the is loading and the error and the category change. Obviously, we don't need that. And then I'm going to copy the use effect. Paste it inside here. We'll modify it. Just like so. We'll modify the use effect a little bit. So we don't need all this. We can change this to base URL. The fetch. It's exactly the same. In this case, we're not going to set the loading. We're not going to set the error and then the loading here just to keep it short. We need to remove the selected category and that's more or less the basics, but we need to be able to grab the slug and send it to Node.js. So in order to do this, we're going to modify the URL a little bit and we need to bring use params in order to get the parameters from the URL. So inside here where we have link, we can do use params. And just like that, just like Node.js, pretty much we can get the parameters from the URL. And now here we can do const URL slug equals use params. Like so. And now I can use the params from here and just attach them to the URL, which is here. If we put this in single slanted quote, like so, we can do dollar sign and then one more dollar sign. Can we do that? Yeah, that might work. It looks a little bit odd. But then after the euro slug, we just need to grab the slug. 
like so save and hopefully now this should get the whole url plus the slack from all url and get the response for us and i'm gonna go back to the book.jsx and copy and copy this here save but we didn't include this route into or main file which is inside app.jsx so we need to include that as well and i'm going to copy the book here and let's say single book route book and then we're going to do single book let's include it into route and this is going to be an important one by the way so this is going to be book and in order to get the parameter from the url we need to do slash just like in node.js slack and we also need to render the single book. Save this. Let's go back to the browser. And as you can see, we're getting an empty array for some reason. So if I was to do books slash the great Gatsby, we're getting data, which is good. And now we need to quickly debug the single book. If we inspect this super quickly, console, and it says failed to fetch data. Okay, at fetch data. Can I have a feeling that what we can do to simplify it, maybe this isn't working here. So base URL, I'm going to remove. I'm going to grab this instead and simplify it. And I'm going to put the base URL to be in here, inside here. So we're going to glue it together from here. So slash and then dollar sign URL slug. But that needs to be on slanted quotes. And that needs to be below the URL slug use parameters. All right, cool. Save this. Let's have a look. And that seems to work. Easy fix. And now we can display the data in a better format if you wish to. So everything is working. I'm going to do right click and format. And now inside here, we can do the rest. So everything is wrapped into a div. And I'm going to use the link in order to have like a little breadcrumb. So two equals. And then we're just going to go back to box. Maybe we can do an icon back like so and then books save this we have it here if i click on it we go back to books and now let's display the book data so i'm going to do a div with the class name of book details inside here i've created two very basic columns so i'm going to do div class of call one and then we have one more div with the class of call two so one and then two save it and as you can see this splits the layout into two inside call one is where i'm going to have the image so i'm going to do img source equals and then inside here we can put the whole url so this slash upload and this would have been better to save into an environment variable so we can reuse it or a variable at the top but that's fine for now and then inside here we can do data dot thumbnail like so save and don't forget to add an old tag as well so old equals data dot title it would be nice to add the height and the width but i'm going to skip this for now and we have the image if i go to another one we have the image cool let's display the other data so let's go to column two and inside column two I'm going to display the title in a h1 so data.title inside the paragraph i'm going to display the description so data.description and then we're going to display the stars in a second as well so let's do another paragraph stars this is going to be a little bit special so i'm going to show you how we can do that categories let's say category and i'm going to do an unordered list it's not going to look nice but it's going to be data dot and uh, we can put question mark just to see whether we get the data and in fact we can do this on every single one otherwise if something doesn't exist we don't want to break it basically we don't want to break our page so we can do that everywhere and then data dot category we can do question mark dot map and then we can set it as item and we can also set an index because every single list will have to have a unique key. So index 
narrow function open and close inside here we're going to do list the list is going to have the key of index and then we can just render the items from this category by putting items save this let's go back um oh and i have an error this needs to be this is not the curly bracket this needs to be open and close the bracket and then put two normal brackets in here okay sorry about that save and now we should get the category uh, romance science you can uh, capitalize them with tss i forgot to do that but that's possible and you can make them a lot nicer than this but now let's have a look at the stars we can definitely do data.stars and save and that should work but let's make it a little bit better so in this case i'm going to make a little component here so let's go here and create a new function and let's call it star rating this is going to take the number of stars so like so and then inside here we're going to do const stars equals an empty array and then for we're just going to do a loop so let i equals zero and then i smaller than number of stars and then we loop and when we loop we want to push the stars into this empty array so if we have five stars we want to push into here so we're going to do stars push and then we're going to do a let's do it in a span span key it's going to have the unique key of i so it's going to be always unique we're going to close the span here and i'm going to put a star you can do you can put an image or whatever you like so now we need to return this function and this is going to be a div with the rating and then inside here we can put the stars okay and now let me show you how we can use this if i go around here we can remove the stars and inside the paragraph in fact it doesn't need to be inside the paragraph we can just put it inside here and we're going to do star rating number of star and inside here is where we put the number of stars so i'm going to copy this and put data is it stars yeah stars and then we close save and as you can see we have five stars on this one did they give him okay four stars on this one so I was thinking that I gave them all five stars. Obviously, these are not real, by the way. It's just a random number. And that's it. So the next bit would be to edit a book. So I didn't really prepare a nice UI for this. But what I'm going to do is just put an edit button in here. Under column one, we're going to do a link. And this link is going to go to. And then this is going to be slash slanted quote. This is going to be slash edit book. Slash. And then we're going to bring the data dot and then slug so we want to go to another page called edit book and then we're just going to bring the slug and do exactly the same thing as here hopefully most of it will be copy and paste actually this is going to be just called edit you can put an icon as well and so on but that's going to be fine so if i click on this yep we're getting the hobbit as you can see in the euro and we need to do the page and the api for this so far if we go back to our server and then or index.js we have the one that we can get the data. So let's create the route that will allow us to update the data. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here, and then instead of app.get, we're going to do app.post. And then inside here, we can put this as app.api slash books, like so, and that will be fine. Asynchronous function, that's fine. Instead of the slug this time, we're going to be requesting the body parameters. So we can do request.body. And that's how we're going to be getting the data from the form. For example, we can do console.log and then request.body. And I'm going to console log this and just put, and I'm going to put data submitted instead, just so it doesn't break like so. And now if I go to turn the client and if you open the last one, getting the great Gatsby here, I'm going to remove the great Gatsby. And instead of get, I'm going to change this to post and I'm going to send this. So as you can see, we have data submitted. And if I was to say inside the body here, we're going to be submitting data such as the title. Let's try this. So I'm going to do title and then the title can be hello world. And let's close this. Okay, that works. And now let's, and now let's send this. And if we open the command line, you will see that we're getting 
console log title hello world and this is how we can pass data through a form so let's build this i'm going to minimize this let's go back to our index.js and from here inside the try we're gonna do const new book equals new book and inside here we can put the fields that we want so we're gonna have the title and to grab the title we can use our request.body and then the request.body is gonna pass the title so i'm gonna do that and then we can copy this one two three four times and this is gonna be slug this is gonna be stars this is gonna be description and then this is gonna be the category and we'll also have and they all need to i need to update them as well they all need to have comma after them and i need to add one more which is going to be the thumbnail but we're going to do this later on so let's do thumbnail and this is probably going to be file instead so we'll do this later on and i'm going to comment it out for now because otherwise it's going to break our code all right just like that we can grab the data and if you wanted to submit the data we can do something similar to this so i'm going to remove everything from here but we're going to do a wait book and then create and then we're going to create the new book that we've passed all right the only field that is required in this case is the title so we must put the title in otherwise it won't work so i'm going to go to thunder client here and i'm going to say hello world and then let's do another line and then slug hello world Task five and so on if i save this sorry if i send this data submitted which is good and if i go back to books hopefully we'll see hello world obviously it doesn't have an image and all that but we're getting hello world and it has the rating and so on so that's all working let's have a look at how we can do this in react js and then we'll bring in the image as well okay let's create a new route inside react source books i'm going to create another one called createbook.jsx and this is going to be very similar to the single book open the createbook.jsx let's do rfce and then from here we import react and we're just going to import the use state because all input fields are going to need them because we're going to be changing the data and then i'm going to import a default image We're going to do this later on from the dot slash asset slash and then this is going to be no image selected jpeg now we're going to create the state for form so i'm going to do const title and then set title this is when we change the title in the form and then we can do use state so the title is the only one required so maybe we can start with one and then the rest will be more or less the same. For example, we're gonna have slug and set slug. All right, let's leave it as it is and let's build the form super quickly now. I'm gonna copy and paste some text in here. So create book. And then after this, we're gonna create a form. And inside the form, we're gonna have two columns. So div with the class name of call one just like before actually and then we're gonna have one more and this is gonna be called two this is where we're gonna display the image so i'm gonna do a label upload thumbnail then image alt is gonna be something like preview image close the image and make sure that we put the source equals and the source is gonna be image and the source is going to be the default image for now but we'll change it later on and we also need an input so we can upload an image so this is going to be input the type of file and this can accept image give image jpeg image png and so on now let's focus on our fields i'm gonna do the slug and the Let's focus on the fields and I'm going to do two to start with and then the rest will be more or less the same. 
So inside here, we're going to do div label, and then this label is just going to be title input. This input is going to have the type of text. Value is going to be the type of text, which we're going to bring in sec. Sorry, title. The value is going to be title, which we're going to create in a second. And on change, we we'll want to be able to update the value of the field. So we're going to do an event and get the value by doing set title, which we're going to create, which we've created, and then event.target.value. And we close the field. And that's it. So essentially, the value is going to be equals to title, whatever that is. At, as default is empty, but when we type in the input, we want to set the title to whatever is inside, and this will update the title if that makes sense. The same for the slug. So essentially, I can copy this, paste in here, and this is going to be slug, the type of text, and then the value is going to be slug, and then set slug like so, and that's it. Let's save this and let's put this into app.jsx. So where we have single book, we can copy this, and this is going to be create book. And then create book like so. And we need to put it into a router here. So this is going to be, we can, maybe we can call it create book. And then we don't need anything else. And this is going to render the create book from above here. Save. Oh, and we don't have a link anywhere, so I'm going to go to the books page super quickly. Uh, books. Uh, maybe we can just add one around here after the paragraph. So this is going to be link to equals and then create book. And I'm just going to do plus add new book. Okay. Save this and here is the button. I click on it. We go to create new book and we have the layout here. The layout looks a little bit broken, but we'll fix that. So let's have a look. And this is because on the form we can create a class name called book details. Save this and here we go. So this is not going to work just yet, but let's test it with the title and the select. Let's see how this works and then we'll build the rest. So where we have the form, we need a button to submit the form and send the changes to Node.js. To do this, after this, I'm going to create an input. And this input is going to have the type of submit. That's it. In fact, that needs to be closed like so. And we're good. Here we go. Here is the button. It's not full width for some reason, but these are things that I can always fix. Now we need to make sure that when we press that button, the form triggers a function. We can, on the form here, we can do on submit and then we can do create book. Copy this and now let's create this function. So inside here, we can do const create book equals async, get the event and then inside here, we do the logic. Since this is a form, we don't when we click on the submit button, we don't want the form to refresh. We can prevent this by doing event dot prevent default. Like so. And that's it. Now we can definitely console log the data just to see whether we're submitting it. And I can do console dot table, for example, or log whatever. And then inside here, we can do title and uh, select, for example. And now if I go back to the website and if we do inspect and if we put console here, let's do rally and then this is a slug submitting. You will see that we're getting, um, it doesn't say what it is, but we're getting the values rally and this is a slug. Maybe I could have paired them here. Uh, no, it doesn't say what it is. But yeah, we're getting the values, which is the important bit here which is good. And now let's have a look at how we can post this and we'll build the, the rest of the form. So in order to post this, we can wrap everything into a try catch. Inside here, we can do const response equals await fetch. And then I'm going to speed up the process and do HTTP 
localhost of 8000 api slash books inside here we can do we can change the method as default is get but this time we're going to post data and then we can change the headers and the headers are going to be content type and then they're going to be set to application json And also we're going to pass the body, which is going to be all data. So we're going to do body. And then we need to JSON stringify, dot JSON stringify, and then we can pass the uh, object in here. So for example, let's do title. And then this is going to be new book 2023 slug new book 2023 and so on actually this needs to come from the form you could test it like this but this needs to come from the form so i'm going to grab the title from here and change the data i'm going to grab the slug and change the data like so after we're done with the response we can check whether the response was fine and we can do if response dot okay and then if it was we can reset the form so for example we can do set title and then we can set the title to be empty and then we can do the same for the slug. So set slug, and this can be empty. Else, maybe we can do console log. Fail to submit data. What else do we need? Of course, you can handle the uh, error here. So you can just do maybe console.log and then error for now. And that's it. So now, if I go back to the website and if we do new book 2023 by the way if i open this in another tab you will see that we don't get the book here which is good and now i can do new book 2023 whoops 23 submit it these fields are now gone and now if i refresh here you should see that we're getting the new book amazing now let's do the rest of the input since we know that this is working and i'm going to start from the top here one two three four five and we're going to do stars, set stars. The stars is going to be use state set to zero as the food. Then we're going to have the description. And then set description. The use state can be fine for this one. Categories. The use state for categories needs to be an empty array because we're going to have more than one category. Thumbnail. Set thumbnail. This is going to be equals no to start with. And then the last one is going to be submitted. Just so we know when we submit data and then set submitted potentially. All right, let's start with uh, submitted. So what I'm going to do is if the response is okay, I want to change the submitted to be true. And now I can wrap the form here. Uh, where is it? So here is our form. And now I can wrap this in, uh, if we get submitted, then we can display something such as data submitted successfully. Or We can wrap everything, format it, and that's it. So now, if I was to refresh, add new book, title, rad, rad, submit, nothing happened. And this is because I've put submitted here. Yep, set submitted is what I need to put. Sorry about that. Let's try one more time. Rad, rad, one, two, three submitted data submitted successfully we go back to books and then we have rad rad okay cool so add new book let's finish the rest so here what we have select we're gonna add one more so i'm gonna copy this this is gonna be stars text stars 
set stars. That's it. Copy this. Description. This is going to be description. And then set description. Technically speaking, this needs to be a text area, so let's do it. Text area can have rows of four. Calls can be 50. Type can be removed. The value can be a description. Yep, and that's absolutely fine, I think. Save it. Yep, it's looking good. Let's do the categories. I'm going to do an input, so I'm going to grab this one here. And I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat here and do comma separate. This is going to be because the type of text, value, categories. And instead of on change, this is going to be a little bit more complex. And I'm going to do it as a function. So I'm going to do handle category change. Copy this and let's create this function. So maybe around here. We're going to do const handle category change, get the event, and then this is going to be set categories. And then what I'm going to do is event dot target. And then I'm going to do value. So we're getting the value and I want to split the value. So split. And we're going to split it by comma so we can add more categories. And then I'm going to do map categories. Sorry, ca map category. It's going to be an R function and we're going to do category trim. Like so. I think that should work. Now if I go back super quickly, refresh and what are the categories? Let's do science, romance. I think that's working. Okay, cool. Now let's have a look at how we can submit the data. And that would be exactly the same as before. So where we have the title and the slick, we can do exactly the same thing. And then the thumbnail I'm going to leave. Now let's test this first. So new book new book for oh, this is a description submit okay Su successfully submitted let's go to books and then new book here um we're getting the new book we're getting this is the description the stars are coming up the category does not seem to come up so let me refresh the API. The category did not work. And this is most likely because of this categories. It should be category. Let's try one more time. Let's uh, refresh the database. And as you can see, this one works. Okay, so it was just the category. We can definitely visit it here. And yeah, everything works except the thumbnail. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated and we're going to have to bring another library in order to submit the image. And this is not going to work. But the reason I showed you this is because in most cases, this is what you're going to do. And in this case where we're going to browse the image, we're going to have to do something else. How should I do this? I'm going to say copy this and just save it here so you can have it and now in this case i'm going to do exactly the same thing but remove the body and the headers and in fact the body can be set to to a form data that we're going to create now so form data like so this is because we can't really send the image as application json there is an easier way from here by doing form data so I'm going to do exactly the same thing, pretty much const form data. 
equals new form data and then in this case we can just append the data so form data dot append and we can start appending all of the data that we had essentially here i'm going to paste in here so i can see it and we're going to do title comma title append one more time slug comma slug And then the last one is going to be the thumbnail. Like so. And now we've passed this data to the body here. Cool. Now we need to do the backend stuff. If we save this, everything should be working as before. Yep, everything is looking good. And now if you go back to our server here, I'm going to make a copy of this so you have a, an example. Okay, I'm going to have to open the command line, stop Node.js, and then we need to install one more package called motor. Let's run Node.js one more time. So we turn it in the background and we can hide this. All right, let's include motor at the top here. So I'm going to do const motor equals require. And then we're going to require Mosa. Like so. In order to be able to upload the images, you will need to add this, which we added earlier. And I'm going to show you super quickly how we can use Mosa by doing it inside here. So if you go back to the browser and you can go to the official package here and the code that I need, basically they give you a really good example here. And the code that I need super quickly is going to be this. So I'm going to copy the whole thing and paste in here and for my post route here i need to have middleware inside so i'm going to do upload dot single and then thumbnail so this is what we are sending from the form it's called thumbnail and this is what we also have in our database as well and now just to explain how this works basically here we have the storage which is essentially where we upload the images and in this case i'm going to remove this and do upload slash and then here is the file name now this is pretty cool because this is going to give your images a unique file name it's going to get the date now and it's going to do a random number and then this unique suffix is going to be added to the file name but i'm going to change this a little bit all the way around so i'm going to put the unique suffix in here and you don't have to have that but then it is nice and then i'm going to glue it with the file name with the original file name so i'm going to do plus and then we can grab the original file name by doing file dot original file name original name and i can show you how this works because where we do console log body we can do console log dot file if i open the command line i'll show you in a second how this works now everything stays the same here but we also add the thumbnail that's absolutely fine and if you go back to the react application sorry about that sorry about the jump in but uh, if you go back here where we have the input we're gonna have to change this as well so i'm gonna do on change and we're gonna do on image change and we can now create this function and we can swap this to image so we have a default image and then if you upload a new one it, it swaps around so somewhere around here const image set image equals use state and this is going to be no image selected basically we're creating a state for this image the default state is going to be this image but if we upload a new one we want to replace it so inside here we're going to do const on image change event if event dot target 
final files and and event dot target dot files zero then inside here we can set the image so we can replace it to URL dot create object URL event dot target dot files so we are basically getting the image And then we can set a thumbnail to the event dot target dot files and then zero. Uh, yep, we need to change this to event, event, event. That's much better. And I spotted a mistake here, uh, files, and this needs to be capitalized. Okay, save this. And now if we go back, refresh, and then choose file the cat as you can see the image changes technically speaking now cat cat five stars this is a cat cat a gory submit failed to submit data all right and one thing that i noticed super quickly it's here where we have form data this needs to be form data like so otherwise it won't send okay let's try cat 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 submit data submitted successfully books i don't see all cat there is a cat here everything is worked actually except the image okay that's not too bad so if we look at the console log super quickly, you will see that we're getting the title select stars description. That's Node.js, by the way. And then we have the file name. So file name is thumbnail, original name is cat.jpg, encoding, destination, file name, and so on. So I need to check whether we save this into the database. So where cat is, we have we don't have thumbnail. Okay. We're going to go back to the Node.js. And this needs to be, instead of thumbnail, this needs to be the file name. Yep. Okay. So the picture was probably up uploaded. And in fact, we need to check that. If you go here, upload. So yeah, here it is the cat image. It has been uploaded. Let's do it one more time now. Books, add new book, dog, dog, five this is a dog let's choose the cat submit successfully submitted books and now we have all cat here so well it's a dog but yeah you know so everything is working here which is amazing and now we can look into how we can edit this all right the next thing that i'm gonna do is the update route or the edit route so we can edit a book so i'm gonna go back to the server here and then let's open the index.js and i'm going to copy this here which is the app.post so i'm going to copy them and paste around here and instead of post i'm gonna add put like so and everything else stays the same so let's remove all this and since we're passing a body full of data we're gonna to need to grab a specific book id in order to query the database and update it so what i'm gonna do in this case here i'm gonna create a const and i'm gonna call it book id and this is going to be equals request.body and then book ID. That's how we're going to know which book we are going to update. And instead of new book, I'm going to remove all of this. Like so. And this is going to be called update book. Like so. I can remove this. And now instead of automatically updating the thumbnail, sometimes an item might already have a thumbnail, as you can see in here. So we've already got this thumbnail and you might not want to update it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an if statement here and I'm going to say if we get a new request with a file, then we want to update the thumbnail. And in order to do this, I'm going to do update book, book and then dot thumbnail. And then this is going to be equals the request file and then 
file name like so. Now from here, we need to change the query a little bit. Instead of await book create, we're going to do await book find by ID and update like so. And inside here, we need to pass the first parameter is going to be the ID of the book. So I'm going to grab it from here. This is going to be this ID here. And then we can pass the object of updated book inside here. So all the parameters, the titles, slug, stars, and so on can go inside here. And that's it. So this is going to be our route and we can close this. Let's go back to our client and go to source, route, book. And now let's create a new one. Maybe we can call it edit or update. Let's go for edit book.jsx because we've already created a link with edit somewhere i think so this one here edit book and now we can pretty much copy the create book jsx before we do that let's do rfc rfc e edit book let's do that and then let's go to the app.jsx and let's make sure that we add it so inside here we import edit book edit book like so and then inside here, we need to add it. So instead of create, this is going to be edit book. And then we need to put a slug in this case and we replace it. Cool. Now, if I click on the edit, you should be able to see that we're getting the, the URL parameter here and we are under edit book, which is great. So we can pretty much close this. Um, we can pretty much copy most of the stuff from create book. In fact, I'm thinking of copying the entire thing pasting it here and instead of create book let's call it or edit book and change it here cool save this let's go back refresh and we broke it oh, um, it's this one here that we need to change so edit book like so and here we go now we have the edit book page. We need to change the title first of all. Let's remove all this as well. So the title will be edit book like so. So the idea is to use the normal get route, which is this one here. So the read one API books and then the ID. In this case, we're using slug, but the idea is to use this. Grab a specific book and populate the fields inside here. So let's do that. We've pretty much already done this, but let's do it around here and i'll show you how we can do it again in order to fetch the data we'll need use state here but we also need use effect like so and then we also need to grab the parameter from the url so i'm going to do import we can import the link just in case we might need it later on and use param like so and then from and this is going to be equals react router get router dom like so and inside here we can use the use params to get the slug so i'm going to do const euro slug equals use params like so and now i can do a base url const url equals and this is going to be equals http localhost of 8000 slash api slash books and then we bring the url select from here just like so and we are good to go if i was to console log this do base url url sorry about this if we do it like that now we should be able to see that we're getting object object and this is because i forgot to do the select here at the bottom and that's it so we're getting api books the great gatsby so now we should be able to fetch the data and populate the field. So to do this, I'm going to create a new function here, const fetch data, async, and then from here we can do try catch. Inside the try we can do const response equals await fetch, and we can get the base URL from here. And then we can check if the response is not okay. Then we can throw an error. Error to 
push data like so. And then if it's successful, we can do const data equals, and then we can await the response. And then we can convert the response to JSON like so. And now, because all fields have, for example, we have title in here, and we have the site title, which we can use to update the title, but each input has this value. For example, the title has a value of title, the slug has a value of slug, we can update them. So we get in the data from the database here, and now I can do set title, and then we can do uh, title, no, data.title, which comes from the database. And now if I go back and refresh, you will see that we, it's not working, and this is because I forgot to invoke the function, so I'm going to do use effect here, like so, and then we can invoke the function, and don't forget to put the comma and then empty array, otherwise this is going to live forever, and use all your data. And now as you can see, we have the Great Gatsby, which comes from the database. If I go to another book, for example, Harry Potter, edit, you'll see that we get Harry Potter, and so on. So we need to do the same for the rest of the data. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five potentially. So set slug, set stars, stars, set category. This is going to be set uh, description. And then data dot description and uh, maybe set thumbnail. Thumbnail data dot thumbnail like so. Okay. So everything seems to be working fine. So we get in the title, the slug, the stars, but we're not getting the image. So for the image, we can use the thumbnail here and let's have a look at what happens. So for the image, we can use the thumbnail in here potentially. But also this thumbnail comes, the actual image comes from the server. So we're going to have to do, yeah, wrap everything in curly bracket. And now in single slanted quotes, we can do dollar sign to bring the thumbnail. But then before this, we need to do HTTP and put the server a URL. Okay. Now we have Harry Potter, which is cool. I think. That could be it. The last thing that we need to do is when we submit the data, so where we have the form, so where we have the form, we have create book. In this case, you can update this to be update book, of course, but I'm going to leave as it is for now. And now inside here, we also need to append the ID because all server needs to know the ID in order to update the specific book. So. I'm going to have to do this by coming in here. We're going to create one more. So the title can be changed to a book ID, maybe. Strange way of doing this, I think, but it uh, should work. So book ID and then set book ID. That's cool. And now I can use set book ID to update it by getting it from the database. So data dot underscore ID. And we were getting basically this, updating the book ID value. And now I'm hoping that we can put this in the top here. And I'm hoping that we can append the inside here now and pass it through the body. So form data append book ID and then book ID like so. All right. Hopefully we come back to Harry Potter refresh. And if I do Harry Potter one, Submit. I should have inspected this and comes a log. Failed to submit data. Okay. So this might be because we didn't submit a new image. At the moment, it's thinking that we're not submitting a new image. And here, where we have form of data append, we can grab this and we can append it. So if we have a thumbnail already set, then we can do form data and we can attempt the thumbnail, but if we don't have one, if, if we haven't added one, then we want to leave the default one. So in this case, the Harry Potter one. Let's refresh one more time, inspect console this time. And now 
if I do Harry Potter 1, submit, fail to submit data. Yep, this is also because inside here we need to change this to put and save. Let's have a look at whether this works now. Sorry about this, Harry Potter 12, submit. And here we go, we have data submitted successfully. And then if you go to books, and if we go to Harry Potter, you will see that Harry Potter is now 12. I can do this, update it, maybe we can give it three stars, and we can put this new fiction, and then fantasy submit, successful, cool. Uh, where is it? Harry Potter. You will see that we have fiction, fantasy, new, updated. And if I wanted to update the image as well, I'm going to add the cat here. It's breaking the preview, which we can potentially fix. But now if I submit it, submit it successfully. And now as you can see, Harry Potter has updated the cover here. It does break it when I choose a new file. Yep. And this is because potentially... Let's have a look. Potentially, we can check if we have the image. Let's have a look. I'm not so sure about this one. Thumbnail. I am thinking that potentially we can check if we have the image, and that needs to be that needs to be set to empty. Okay. And if we have an image question mark inside here, let's see this. Let's try this. Basically, what's breaking is this URL here. Format. Okay, let's see. Choose cat. Yes. Okay, so we're updating. Um, I don't have another picture, but we can update in our book. So this one here, the Great Gatsby, edit it. Um, new. I'm going to add my cat. Update. Submit. Okay, awesome. Uh, that's it. And as you can see, this is now updated. The last thing that I'm going to do is inside here, inside the edit, I'm going to add somewhere a delete button. And then we're going to do the delete route. So for the delete, let's save this and let's go back to our server index.js. And somewhere here, somewhere around here, it doesn't really matter. Let's focus on this one. We can do app.delete. And then from here, we can do API slash books slash and then the id of the book that we want to delete and this is going to be an asynchronous function we're going to have the request and the response and then inside here we can do const book id to grab the book id and then we can grab from the params so request.params and then dot id which is this one here and now we can do try catch and then inside here we can do await book dot delete one and in order to delete one we need to pass we can use the id and then we can pass the id from here like so and for the catch we can just do rest dot json error for now and then for the response here we also need a response here so rest dot json and then I'm going to do how they plus, and then we can do plus request dot body dot book ID. If you want to see the book ID that you deleted. Cool. That's it. That's the delete route. Obviously I'm going to tidy all this up later. I just wanted us to focus on one route at a time. Save this. Let's go back to react. And we're going to do this in the edit book. Maybe we can add it around here. So I'm going to do a button and then this button is going to have a on click and we're going to create a function called remove book and then inside here I'm going to actually I need a class name for this class name delete I think I just made the button red that's pretty much it and then this is going to say delete book. Okay, let's see how it looks. It might break actually. Yeah, it will because this function does not exist. So let's create this function here. Const, const remove book. And then this is going to be async event. And then we need to 
prevent the default. So e dot prevent default like so. Um, say let's see. It's not very pretty, but that should do the job. So delete book. When we press it, we want to go to the route and delete the specific book. A try catching here, and then inside the try, we can do const response await equals sorry response equals await fetch, and then we fetch the URL, which is going to be HTTP localhost of eight thousand API slash books and then slash and then we need to pass the book ID. So I'm gonna do plus book ID because we have it already in here set where is it book ID we've already got in here and we're updating it from here we're setting it from the database when we go on that page so we can reuse it. And now we need to change the fetch method by doing curly brackets and then inside here, method delete. Like so. And now we can do the usual around here. We can do if response dot okay. Then we wanna navigate. And then I'm just gonna navigate to box when we delete the record we also need to add the navigate function so we're gonna go here to the top and maybe add it around here this can be const navigate equals and this is gonna be use navigate press enter and if it doesn't add it in here from react route dom add it manually like so and now we can use the navigate so copy and where were we where were we here navigate Oh, did I misspell this? Okay, navigate slash box. That's absolutely fine. And maybe we can do console.log book book removed. Okay, for the let's do right click and format. And for the catch error, we can just do console.error for now. Okay, save this. And now we're on the great Gatsby and it's gone if i click on all of these that we added earlier when we we're testing edit gone should be gone edit gone yep as you can see there oops as you can see they are deleted now and gone and let's remove this one here as well final one edit delete book and the hobbit is gone I think that's going to be pretty much everything from this tutorial. It was supposed to be a very simple one and it ended up being a full on React tutorial. If you learned something from it, make sure that you hit the like button, consider subscribing, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.